we're going to talk real quickly about this idea of framing. I have this particular frame that I call the, the upside down power tie that uh, we're going to work out of for a bunch of stuff. And then we're going to dive right into this. So everyone come close and um, why should we do this together? Some more um, follow along. Everybody take your hand and do like you're doing a collar tie. Notice when you're doing a collar tie that your hand is above your elbow. Now everybody flip it over. Put your elbow above your hand. Now make sure your palm is facing you. This is what we're going to do. You're like, but I'm kimuring myself. Yes, but it'll be okay. I promise. You're going to lean into the person and this is going to be a little wedge. Really important thing, we're never going to chase anyone. So the first thing we're going to focus on right now is being able to rise up. So Natasha's going to come in and help me. Um, the context for this, at least to make it easy for yourself, is not side control. A side control would be Natasha's already solidified her face, she's crushing me. You can get away with doing stuff from here, but you already really messed up by letting the person between your hips and your armpits. So we're not going to go about it. The context is Natasha has beaten my legs, but is not yet occupying my armpit. This is an important distinction. She's beaten my legs. Like my guard is at a point where recovering my guard is no longer feasible. At least not easy. And so instead of being like, I guess it's time to do side control escapes, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to break the rule of jiu-jitsu, and I'm going to show my back. Important thing, I'm not giving my back. Often we just be like, but you're giving me your back. No, I'm not. I'm just showing it to you. It's a very important distinction. Just because she's behind me doesn't mean she has my back. Um, something that you probably hear Chris Payne and Preet, it's a very common thing. It says, she only has my back if she can occupy my armpit on one side or down to my hip. These spaces between my armpits and my hips, this is what makes her have my back because she has control of me. But simply being behind me does not mean she has my back. She doesn't actually have any control of me unless she can open up these spaces. Right? So, as she passes my legs, all I'm going to do is take my elbow and put it either in her neck, like so. Notice I'm not trying to punch her in the throat. It's really important, this, not just because this is kind of being douchey, but also because this helps her arm drag me and actually take my back. So, really important, don't cue your body on extension. Cue your body on a lean into the neck. This is super important. I'm cueing like I'm leaning down into her. And if I have to chase her, that means I shouldn't even do this. It's just quick face guard. So people right here, what matters is that you're driving into me. She's trying to put me on the floor and I'm here. My framing context is going to be elbow. So if I'm on my shoulder, I'm always going to reach back, slide into space, come up to here. If she keeps driving in, I slide, go to my hand. Right? doing this exact same thing, and this is the idea. So everything's gonna be based around getting to this position, either here on her neck, or the slide back over. Option B, if Natasha's a head hunter and she already has my head, blam, I can't get to her head anymore, but I can open my elbow into her armpit. Same idea, I found a home for my elbow. If I'm up my hand is great, let's imagine I was late, on my elbow, or on my shoulder. Same thing, if I try and go into Natasha, I'm bigger than her, it's still hard. But if I go into space, I can always rise. Same thing, I use this foot now, slide into space. I can always rise up. And this is gonna set me up where Natasha's over eagerness is gonna kazushi herself. She's already off balance to set me up for little bits of butt judo afterwards. So you're not gonna do it yet, but I need you to have this. If you can't have a strong frame, then all of this becomes a power thing and it's just not feasible for me to call that good grappling. It's just gonna be go lift weights and you can win. That's not mm -hmm. right, all right? So, does anybody have a question about this idea? Really, really important, press, everyone touch your elbow, two fingers from your elbow, this is what we're pressing with. We're not stabbing our partner with our elbow, that's not what we're doing. We're pushing with either there on the neck or more feasibly right here on the armpit. So she's trying to grab my neck, it fits right together and I have to be pressing down. If we look at my shoulders, I'm not shrugging, I'm doing the opposite of a shrug. Pressing down, elbow down with this frame. I want you to feel this, have your partner, just let your partner crush you down, smack, and then slide into space. See, I'm always sliding at that angle. This is the important bit, and constantly rising. As long as she pressures me, I'm going to rise. I want you to understand this concept. I can also stand up as well, but that's not this class. It's a different class. I'll just stand up. Watch it on Instagram or YouTube. That's my guess. Ready? Uh, we're gonna clap because I like clapping. One, two. Ooh. Yeah, 
essentially, because I get to show to a bunch of people, if there's a pattern of mistakes, I like to identify that, that common failing point. Because I am slightly rushing this framing class, because this class isn't about framing, this class is about butt doodle. But I need this as a, as a kind of a basis. So Natasha saw an error, what did you see? Yeah, um, so when Charles, Charles is gonna lean onto me, right? My shoulder, or excuse me, my elbow is going onto his upper trap. So I'm not poking him like this. Even if my hand's here, that's not the angle, it's this. And so keep going. So it's this. And let's say I'm already down, what he was talking about was like going into space and swimming into space. So just a quick note for you guys. A little follow up on that. This context only works for an aggressive opponent. Yes. If your opponent is not engaging, you just do jujitsu. Like, cause if she's not chasing me, you just go, you have a guard. Do your guard things, All right? So like, I, I don't want, if you try and force this move, they will take your back and strangle you and you'll be mad at me, but it's not my fault. Don't chase people with this move, it's just bad. You want to only do this with an aggressive opponent. So there's going to be a cue for your decision process. Do I feel pressure? If the answer is yes, I will rise into space. What does it mean, rise into space? I mean swim and rise. And those are my points, so I'm trying to get taller. I'm trying to get my head as high as I can. I want to get my head higher than their head eventually. Do I feel pressure? Yes. And the next steps that I usually teach would be going all the way up to a knee and then standing, but that's for a different class, like I said. For now, we're going to stop at the hand. And then we're going to talk about our first butt judo move. So the real judo move is called ogoshi or a major hip toss, or in wrestling, I think it's just called hip toss. Um, you have an underhook, there's many ways of doing it. In judo, they might show you a lot of kazushi and pulling and all of this. Not, I mean, it's super important, but not super important what I'm talking about. All I care about you guys remembering is that there is an underhook. It comes through here, our body is turning around, and that our partner lands like that. But because I'm standing up, Natasha fell from the height of my leg. On the ground, my ass is already on the ground. So, or butt, so the class is not called ass judo, it's butt judo, sorry. <laughs> so we're here. I'm, this one's gonna usually be easier from the armpit grip. If I'm here, I would be doing a slightly different throw, it would be a head and arm throw, or a koshiguruma in judo. So for now, I'm gonna show you guys from the armpit. Same deal, when I'm in the armpit, the extra detail is I must turn to my side. You see I made Natasha fly forward a little bit? But if, imagine Natasha was really big and huge, I try to move that, she doesn't move, I have to move me. Good rule in jiu-jitsu, you move the person who has less mass. If that's me, I move me. It's her, I move her. So when you're the big guy, you're probably moving people a lot. Your little guy, moving you a lot. Your medium, it's the difference. So you slide over here, go to my elbow. She's still chasing me. What's gonna allow me to throw her is her chasing me. If she ever stops chasing me, we take guard. All right? So she's still chasing me, I go to my hand. So now, what you can see right here is when we're up this high, I'm on the side of my hips. To do my throw, all I have to do is get my hip past her and get my knees to the mat. So I'm gonna let go of my frame, catch my underhook, and get an easy throw. Now mind you, the fact that I was able to leave my hand on the floor is because of the fact that Natasha was not a sophisticated opponent. If Natasha was being sophisticated, she might have posted, in which case I'll have to take this extra hand and pull her post out. But you went from your partner thinking that, ah, this guy sucks at guard, I'm gonna pass his guard, I'm gonna take his back, I'm gonna strangle him. All these hopes and dreams of good things happen to you. And then you dash them away as you threw them in the air, made a big splattered with looking. And they're like, mm. but we want that. We want to affect our partner's emotions in a mildly negative way. <laughs> we're not, we don't want them to stay up at night, but we just want to cause a slight eh inside of them. All right, so we're here. One time, yeah, mild trauma, mild trauma. So we're here, tilting them away, going into space, going into space. So it's all about this moment. I have to decide, I have to commit. So in this moment, I'll even sometimes go to that next step of my knee. So as I come up to my knee, I catch this. So Natasha's too good, I can't sweep her. Now I take her arm. Underhook, arm, now I'm the one on top. So what happens and how you do it will depend upon how committed your partner is. This is with the hand under the arm. Since I, I taught them together last time, I'll teach the other one as well, to the head. So I'm right here, same thing, but on the head, exact same thing, just instead of going to the armpit, I'm gonna go to the head and arm. So I'm rising up, right, I'm rising up. So now we're here. This time, 
going through underhooks is impossible, but here's a head and arm. Instead of going in the armpit, I want to slap her arm. I want to try and make that post go away if possible. But same deal. I rise up, head and arm. Don't um, let your slide at the back take your back. If I do this, I'll often sag over here, slide my elbow back. Because if I overcommit, Natasha's going to slide out the back, and then she actually will take my back, and that's embarrassing after all my talk of not going to back taken. <laughs> so just be weary of that. The danger of the head and arm is people slide out the back. If you watch old school Ronda Rousey, she head and arm through lots of people, Koshi Garuma, beautifully, occasionally they slide out the back. Keep that in mind. That's a vulnerability of the head and arm throw. That's part of why I prefer the uh, underhook flap. Questions, thoughts, concerns? One more time for the head and arm of Cool, the Ogoshi, cool. One more time, right here. I'm right here, elbow is open. See that turning away? I'm gonna, depending on how strong she is, I'm either gonna push through my legs or my arms, sliding into space, I'm up. Oh, she's still chasing me, I'm up. Okay, this is the moment. It's all about, okay, I still can't really replace my guard. She was lazy to replace her guard, I can't, fine. Slide to my knee, underhook time. Catch her arm. Here we are. Not technically a goshi. It's almost like a haraya as well with my leg. Depends on how committed you are. But the idea is get up, get on top. It's really not as hard as you think. When you do it, you're like, wow, that was pretty easy. So just make sure you keep your frame and you get your head higher than theirs. That's the key detail. Question? Question. Um, head and arm, what do you do to not get the back to the Oh, so what I'm doing not to get my back is not over exaggerating. So I'm doing the head and arm version. I'm up here, I slide out, come here. I reach over. Once again, I want to get my knee up. I catch right here. I just don't over exaggerate. Once she hits the floor, I slide my elbow back. Okay. Because she, in order to take my back, she needs that big, like, shrug me with the shoulder. Like, she needs that to happen. Uh, okay. So I'm going to come here and switch my hips. My back's not vulnerable anymore. My back's really just vulnerable. Now, mind you, if you play Keiza Katami or side sit out, judo, you can dive in and play your Keiza if you get it deep. But if you're doing it lazy, she's going to take your back. All right? Really close in the camera, hopefully you got something out of that. <laughs> Any questions, anybody? Great stuff, off you go. Ogoshi, um, Koshigaruma, but Judo, part one. One, two. <laughs> if your partner is not giving you the right feed, it, doing the move stops making sense. So if your partner stops attacking and, and chasing you, then you shouldn't do this move. This move is made for over-aggressive partners. Like, I'm a very big fan of, of, like, kind of tricking my opponents into being stupid. And so, like, the more I can get you emotional, the more I can get you to be over-aggressive, the more you can overextend yourself, and then I get to do things to you. If you are very calm and relaxed, half my game stops working. Like, at least my low-hanging fruit. So I need you to be over-aggressive. So as an uke, if you're being very calm and relaxed, and you're not pushing forward and not giving them that forward pressure, they shouldn't do this move. They should just pummel their leg in and replace card. Here's what I mean. At any point in the game, or in the drill, I'm right here, right? I got up to here, Natasha's still chasing me. If she stops, stay, stay still right now, and I can just put my leg between her legs, well then I should just do jiu-jitsu. I should just play my guard. Use the butterfly sweep. Use the things you know. So if you're, if you're over here and you have your leg in, you're like, Charles, I can't do the, the butt judo. Like, no, you shouldn't do the butt judo. You, you have jujitsu. You have a guard. But, uh, bonus technique. Judo has a move called sumigaishi. Happens to be one of my favorite throws. And because that is within the bounds of, of judo and this class is called butt judo, I can get away with teaching it to you without completely diverging from what I plan on teaching you. So, um, for, if you ever have a partner who lets you, right? So... As I, I'm right here, as I get up, if Natasha's ever in a situation where she's asleep at the wheel or didn't catch me and I'm able to get my foot between her legs, I can do this move. But it all depends upon Natasha's arm. Natasha has her arm over my shoulder right now. She might have her arm by my waist, trying to take me down like this, or maybe like, like body locking me or something. This is a real thing that might happen. Or she might have her hands slide back on my leg. Like uh, if you have to see people that hug your legs and these kind of passes. All of these are possible scenarios that fit into what we're talking about here. The cool thing about it is that all of these scenarios that if I can get my leg inside, I can make my partner fly. Let's back up a little bit, Tasha, again. So I don't want to make you fly. Uh, <laughs> so, 
Um, on both the neck version and the armpit version, I'm actually going to go with the neck version because it happens to be my favorite. So back to our same context, right here, Natasha's here, I slide up to just like this, right? As I slide away, I rise to here, Natasha gets lazy, fine. I pummel my foot into here. Now my entire mind is on one thing. Where is her arm? Ah, her arm's on my hip. I'm just gonna move my hand once again to her armpit. I grab her arm and then I fall and do some negation, kicking my leg up and and she falls over here. If you are in, you know, leg lock inclined, you do a back heel, and the leg is yours. If you're not leg lock inclined, you take your foot out. And the ground passes yours. Come back. Important uh, thing about this technique, if you ever do this one with your hand behind your back, and you sweep the person, the level of intensity of that match will increase. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever do anything in jiu-jitsu with your hand behind your own back, People might have feelings about that. <laughs> Just a little fair warning. But it fits into the game that I want. What did I say I wanted? I want someone aggressive. So they pop up, they're gonna come in even more aggressive and then I can do the stuff we did last time. So doing this one more time, this is for the partner who's just kind of sluggish. I'm right here. Doesn't matter, elbow on top or bottom. I prefer elbow on top for this one. Um, maybe the manager touch is attaching her hands together, right? I slide up, I'm sliding up. All that matters to me, let's back up one second, mm -hmm. is that I don't let Natasha get in my armpit. If I let her get in my armpit and like climb to my shoulder with her left hand, this is gonna be bad. Me getting up is gonna get really hard right now because she controls the arm that I'm using to get up. So I absolutely can't let this happen. I must be hand fighting to not allow this. Let's back up a second. As she's coming down, I have to make sure that if she's hunting for my armpit, no, I'm hand fighting. I'm not, this is so important to me. I cannot give up this real estate. I'm gonna use my forehand to hand fight this away which brings me to something else that I'm not teaching, but I promise I'll teach you on Wednesday. Don't come on Wednesday. Chou jitsu, the thing. Right, so here, elbows right here, slide up, right? Immediately, she's lazy, pommel, boom. Hands on the hip, gotcha, you're flying. If, for whatever reason, as this happens, she chooses to sprawl and hug my legs, same thing, cut your wrist. Flying again. Now the amplitude of the flight depends on how high your partner's butt is. Natasha had her butt low, small travel. If Natasha's butt was higher, like she's really diving in here, either here, the same thing even would go if she had both of my legs, but I would have to first frame and extract one. Now I catch it, same throw. Over and over again. This is one of my favorite things in all shoots. Same move, but now your partner's lazy. Pommel the foot. You catch the hand, we'll just go through all the options. Hand under your leg, one, two, go. If their hand is in space over your thigh for whatever reason, arm drag, go. Hands behind your hip, catch it, this one's even a little different, you lay on it. Go, not quite as, as flashy, but extra angry. Um, if, <laughs> if their hand is on your shoulder, I actually really don't like letting this happen. If they're on the shoulder, I might still just stand up because I can't grab their hand comfortably from here. I might still say, eh, I'm gonna see if you chase me. And then if as I'm standing up, their hand goes lower, now I'm in business again. But it all depends on the, on the skill level and aggressiveness and wrestling ability of my partner. If my partner's an elite wrestler, I'm, I'll be a little bit more disciplined, a little bit less, uh, less crazy on my stand-ups. Because if I stand all the way up, they're gonna blast off me across the room. That might not be fun. Yeah? When you're reaching behind to grab the hand, are you off-balancing her more, or are you just keeping her composed? Just keeping her composed. Perfect question. Easy answer. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on? Um, what's, just, the, sorry, what's, the, what's the movement of the leg? Movement of the leg? Uh, so, so, one second. So, yeah, you just saw the back of Natasha. The uh, movement of the leg is really just, I catch something here, or here, but it's, I'm anchoring my elbow as I pull, and falling. There. It's almost as if I'm about to do a back roll but I'm not. I'm actually more just tilting there as if I almost was going to, but I never actually back. And so, in the case of a stool in the leg, behind the back, across the arm, on the shoulder, no, I'm just gonna stand. I just, you can pull it off here, but I don't recommend it. It's, you're rolling some dice at that point. The wrist, the wrist, what happened when you tried? 
Oh. So I, I might pull it off, I might not open up. She has my shoulder, if she's anchoring down, I slide out, I get it in here, is that she can just let go. So as I go for it, just post on the floor, I don't get anything. But from right here, I, I can still go into regular jiu-jitsu again, because I have a guard, right? But I don't like this. I don't like having, like for example, I was rolling with Mike, he did a great job, he sprawled on me, my leg is tired, it's not fun. So like this is, if they, you let your partner post, they'll hang on your leg, and then I'm going back to neutral. Which is fine, but I don't want to go back to neutral. I want to win. So, uh, good answer. Good question. Off you go. One, two. So the, this uh, next sequence is going to be off of two, um, two different postures from, uh, from the defensive justice system. One is uh, called, called hawking, and the other is called panda. I'm a very big fan of panda. The, what, they, what are these really? It's just really playing a bottom side control looking away and, and encouraging this person to come over here would be hawking, and then panda would be hiding in here like so. Is that all of it? Of course not. But if you want more, just find Preet or Chris Paynes or somebody and they'll help you out. I'm only giving you the beginning of this because all I care about is that you don't let people in your armpits. Even if you know nothing about defense jiu-jitsu, keep people out of your armpits. It's going to make them want to choke you. When they try and choke you, you throw them. That's going to be the entire cue. Last time it was, do I feel pressure? If yes, move into space. If no, replace guard. This one's going to be no armpits for you. You'll probably try and choke me, you try and choke me, I throw you. So this position is called panda, you put your feet out, bend your straight, doesn't matter. You keep the angle of your back full. Well, how the heck would you get here? Have you asked. So right here, we're in side control. This person, once again, to come back on your knees. She was here, she was coming down. I failed horribly at everything from last time. I was late, I didn't frame, didn't do anything. But I can still, if I do a good enough job of not letting this arm in my armpits, I should still be able to get my legs over here and lean forward. I should be able to do this. Now mind you, you're like, but you just gave her your back. No, I didn't. I just showed her my back. She doesn't have my back. I keep my elbows in. Important thing, everyone look at my arm. If I make a hole, Natasha will put her hand in. Don't want that. So I want to take that same point we pushed into them last time into my own hip. So my partner should not be able to get in there. Um, this will not be a whole class on this. So we're just going to pretend that you are really good at this already. Pretend. So your partner's not gonna go for your armpit, they're gonna try and strangle you. So generally speaking, Natasha's coming here, as I rise up, she's gonna usually try and strangle me with her dominant arm. Most people are right-handed, she's gonna try right here. All that I care about is that I keep my shoulders shrugged, which makes my neck harder to access, and that I come one, two. So I need her elbow to be a little bit more over. I need this, right? But if I do this, then now she's actually choking me. This, this is that, right? I don't want this. But if as she comes in, my shoulders are shrugged, See how this little lump? She gets my face instead. One, two, now I have what I want. I'm gonna hug, like, just like the old Gracie self-defense classes. Where they're like, what do you do when a mugger chokes you? One, two, throw. That's what we're doing. We're doing Gracie self-defense to get our pink belts. That's what we're doing, all right? <laughs> so one, two, and as we come through here, we're gonna turn to our side and then, oh, I'm gonna totally throw her into the camera. Let's back up. <laughs> Let's not do that. And so as I'm laying down, I rise up, she comes in, I'm gonna come and technical stand-up kind of, but to my knee. And then now that I'm here, we get to pretend like we're Steven Seagal or like David Carradine in Kung Fu and make her flip. And it looks really cool, right? And it looks like it's BS, right? <laughs> but every single time I do it, every single time I do it rolling, I get a big grin on my face and as the person goes, they give me a look. <laughs> so like, I love, I love moves that look like they should be fake. So, um, so we're just gonna start from right here. Natasha's arm comes across. Key, I have to be one, two. I'm leaning into the, the opposite side of being choked, getting to my knees. And I, I can pick her up like I did because she's smaller, or I can just bring my shoulder down. And she's gonna roll over. But when you do it that way, you don't have that, that nice feeling in your belly. The, the thud. And so I want to go like this. I have a, a YouTube video of like judo, because judo teaches this as an ipon seonage into a katagaruma from standing. Sorry, Tasha. <laughs> and so at, or like, when you screw up your seonage, you come through to here. They teach this in traditional judo, and they come here, and it looks just like that. And it's so pretty. And so I was like, how can I make that beautiful judo stuff happen in our scrappy jiu-jitsu? And like, this is how my, I did it. I have to just trick you by like giving you like, please choke me, right? So I'm up here, necks out, comes in, catch it one. Catch it two, post, 
Drop. Now here's the important bit. Lean over. If she's on my side, it'll be the kind of like almost like a fireman's. If I choose to leave her behind me, like this, it's more of a shoulder throw. Like that. So it all depends on my angle. So without Natasha here, if I choose to kind of bring my shoulder to the mat, it looks like a shoulder throw. But if we want to feel like we're in an old kung fu movie, then we got to come to our knees. Come out, come here, we let go of one hand, that little swoosh behind, it looks really cool. I'm telling you, it's all about the cool points. And like every time you do it, you're going to get a look from your partner afterwards. Like they know what happens. <laughs> so give it a try. Trust me, it just looks like bullshit. It's not actual bullshit. <laughs> Off you go. Oh, sorry. Next time. One, two. Two people made a mistake similarly, which means I, didn't, I wasn't clear about something. So really important, as Natasha's arm goes in, whether it be from here, or you can even get away with this from right here on your side, as the arm goes in, what I'm really trying to do is get to my knees. Let's see how her head is. I don't want to roll with her. I want to make her move and stay up. So I get to do the one on top. If I roll with her, I'm giving her my back, or giving her an attempt at my back. Even if she doesn't get it. So the, the cues for me are always, I want to get to my knees, and I want to try and tilt down and lift up. And if she's not going, this hand is like an assistant. I'm just flat, I'm just flapping it. I'm not going, not doing that. It's too much. So you guys get a little too, too excited. We just want that, all right? So to give you the secondary one, instead of going the panda, right? You're like, I don't do any of that preach it, right? Fine. So come over here. As it comes in, it comes in. Instead of coming to Panda, you can go straight to the throat, which is totally an option as well. As I'm coming in, all I care about is connecting my elbow to a piece of her arm, whether it be her armpit or here. And on this side, using a false grip, not my fingers, but that false grip here like this to get an attachment. Once I get that attachment, I'm just trying to get to my knees. And so th whenever this happens, like, I would never be rude to my partner, but on the inside, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it one more time. Just know if I do this too this week, on the inside, I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about her reaching. The more she reaches with this hand, I, once like I'm hunting either that armpit or this arm, and I got, I got what I want right here. And now I just get to my knees. And the more that I pull up, the, the more impressive the throw looks. And like, you could totally be good at jiu-jitsu and actually attack her and do a submission, but I usually just let go and reset and smile. <laughs> Up to you. Use it at your own discretion. I had a question. Just, uh, so it wasn't really working unless I rolled? Ah. Does that sometimes happen that like, it's like, oh, it should work? Kind of? Kind of Where is your large partner? I'd like to try. <laughs> oh, uh, who, who's, who's a big person here? Hey, who's really large? I'll use the large person. Cool, large person. You've been called up by your partner. <laughs> because, like, size is not everything, but it totally matters. So, it might be a situation where when the size is too big, it just doesn't work, but I'll try. So, I might just go, oh, look at big people. So, as it's coming in, I need this. Once I have this, as I come to my knees, right? He's larger. But I, you see how he's, once his head's that far, I think he's gonna go. The reason this wouldn't work is if he's really, really tall. If he keeps his head up tall, this would fail. But even because he's reaching with that arm, he's giving me his balance, right? So like, reach in for a minute. I have no, uh, actually, actually try and like, come after me. There we go, perfect. This actually helps a lot. Because he has my neck, he's 100% going. See, he's over. And now he has my neck, but he doesn't have position. And then I slide in. And I get to him. Like I said, everything depends on your partner actually wanting to mess you up. If your partner is very skittish, this doesn't work. Which is why what I do last time, right? We just threw them with our hand behind our back. They're already pissed off at us. They're going to come after us for real. But I, not even his power. It's not that he's being powerful. It's simply that he's committing that arm to come after me, right? His arm has to come forward and this head come forward. His butt's off his heels. This butt off the heels is why all this works. 
If he was sitting back and not committing with his button his heels, it'd be very, very hard to throw him. So I need him to be really trying to crush me. So from right here, if I try to do this and I feel he's heavy, well, I can slide out and go to Panda. Well, now look, in order to get on top of me, now his butt has to leave his heels, so I'm leaning forward. See that? Yeah, I don't know if you ever can see his butt, but it should be off his heels, mm -hmm. right? So I might have to, now I stop the Panda, now I have what I want, now he's gonna do him. All right? Uh, I had one more throw, we are not gonna have time to show you guys that. Uh, actually, you guys just probably, well, we'll find out. <laughs> we have five minutes on your show to you anyway. So that's Ipon Seonage and Kanagaruma. Uh, and wrestling, it's just shoulder throw and uh, fireman's carry. Um, last one is going to be a whoosh, but also kind of like a foot sweep. So there's going to be two things I'm going to shove in here because I've had a lot of fun teaching you guys. So you don't have to like dancing, but it's helpful for jiu-jitsu. So hey, we're going to slow dance with our partner real fast. Um, what I care about is, is Natasha's uh, foot time. I'm going to make Natasha circle. As I step, she steps. You see that? I made her step, and my foot's inside of her foot. I'm just gonna practice being able to make her step extra long. As she steps, I just do that. You see how I move her foot? Practicing the ability to catch that timing. Really good, do that a couple times. Now, in a match begins, Natasha's standing. I'm sitting down just like this. If, her, if that leg was in front, I wouldn't do this. All right? I need that leg to be in front. So all I'm gonna do is all I'm going to do is try and get that leg closer. So all I'm going to do is threaten taking her back. How do I do that? I take a step, and I circle this way. She comes, right? So look, I made her circle because she doesn't want me to take her back. I circle again. I have to figure out a way to get my foot in range to kick her foot right before she steps. Now this is the hardest move of the day because even I screw up. I have to get her timing. Maybe I'm doing stuff or whatever, but I'm just circling, circling, waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. Fall. Once again, this, this is not the best move, but I can follow up and do all kinds of great jiu-jitsu stuff. But I'm just going to smile and laugh on the inside and keep rolling. So doing it one more time. I think I have real follow-up system, just not teaching it to you. This is just all for fun. We slide, slide. So if she gets too far ahead, it's just not going to work. Go back to regular jiu-jitsu. Slide, make a step, slide, make a step, slide. And you have to just kind of feel it. Right for it. That's gonna happen. You're gonna kick your partner's leg. So here, also Natasha had done this too so many times, she's skittish now. <laughs> so here, one, two, and wait for it. Make sure you don't kick up, kick across on the floor. Dance with your partner for about a minute, then try this once, then we're gonna be done. I'm definitely like a minute over time. So thank you so much guys for this. Off you go. One, one, two. <laughs>